interview with Karen Monique Henry, president of the St. Andrew Old Girls Association. The date, 9th of May, 2013. Location, St. Andrew High School Museum. Emory James Museum. Welcome to Karen Monique Henry, a dynamic old girl, very involved. Uh, she has been um, a trailblazer in many respects both in terms of her work and also in terms of her extracurricular activities. So Karen, welcome. Thank you, Marie. Tell us a little bit about school days. We're always <laughs> fascinated with our old girls and their impressions of school in, during their time. Well, first off, I have to admit it was my mother's choice for me to come to St. Andrew. I'd never heard of St. Andrew High School. And uh, my mother was an educator herself thought this was the place I should be, and so when I passed my common interest, I was placed here, and um, it was absolutely wonderful. The class I was placed in as well had a very dynamic, organized, compassionate set of young ladies, and in fact, we were spoiled by most of our teachers. We got tons and tons of presents from them and cake each year for our parties and this sort of thing, and we actually got this form twice, in first and third form. We used to put on tea parties, fashion shows, um, have these jumbo sales every couple of weeks and raise funds for the school. We would collect bottles. We did so many things. We helped to raise money before the AV Center was built. We had helped to raise money for that. We also raised money towards the band. The little first 15 years we used to have, we were among the classes that raised money for that. And so it was nice to be among a bunch of girls who were so in, you know, innovative and dynamic and thing. We had our little dance group as well. One of the members of the dance group is actually appearing here now. <laughs> and she's still involved in dance. And um, we had a lot of fun. In the lunch time, we would sometimes put on this kind of dance and call it Studio 54 and this sort of thing. So it was nice that they knew how to have fun mm -hmm. without being rambunctious or vulgar or anything. And how about class. the teachers? The teachers were excellent. What, any excellent. that stand out in we your mind? Had, I remember fondly Sheila Anderson, for example. Sheila was our music teacher and she was, I think, was second form and she was a form teacher. And we used to tease her a lot, you know, but she, she, she took it in good stride. We also did drama with Bobby Gisses. And um, he, as a woman, was an outstanding thespian in his day. And so we were very inspired and, and we strove for excellence mm -hmm. under the tutelage of these stalwarts. We had Miss Wooden, Miss Wooden who was the teacher's craft and so on. I never mastered pottery, but that's okay. I still learned lots of other interesting things, leather work and um, batik and this sort of thing. I found quite fascinating. Mm -hmm. And then of course on the academic side, Spanish was number one for me. I had the Urquhart record from second to fifth floor, yes. And um, that was... That was the love of the, your... The love of language, yeah. The seed was planted here. Right. The seed was planted here. And, and you mentioned Sheila Anderson music, and certainly you have a great love of music too, which yes. you'll tell us about later. Yeah. Indeed, indeed. Yeah. So, you know, lots of people, and then of course Miss Rita was our principal at the time, a very calm, sober soul. Very firm in her own way, but not an old and forceful personality. Very effective principal. And when I came back to teach, she was still principal, and then she retired, and they uh, recalled to go in 1889. Right. Yeah. So it sounds as though you were quite a goody goody in school then. I don't, I, I don't hear you mentioning any little tricks you might have gotten. No. <laughs> It's funny that somebody asked me last week at the gym if I was mischievous at school because they are convinced and I'm a little mischief I said, no, I was too afraid of my parents to get trouble at school. <laughs> it's as simple as that. Right. So, I don't want anybody to be called in my house right. to tell my parents that I was in trouble in my class. So family were strict disciplinarians. So I think your, your, your parents was a te teacher. teacher and my father was a policeman. Okay. okay. Right. So that, that said it. <laughs> And my mother was a strict author too. She still is. She still is a very, very strict person. Mm -hmm. We try to get her to relax sometimes, but 
It's very much part of her right. makeup. Right. So, you, so you, your upbringing was quite disciplined. Yes. And you applied that to your schoolwork, presumably. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. And then Mrs. St. Andrew gives you structure because the first day you arrive, you are given your homework notebook and you know that you have to go home and do your assignments. You have your timetable, you take the appropriate books. It's a very structured environment. A very welcoming environment, yes, but a lot of structure and they give them guidance right through. So um, we really had no major problems. My mother was sarcastic at times, but she said, oh my God, you have so much homework. And, and my sister also came here. She's four years my junior. So my mother was a person who seen us with this structure. Mm -hmm. And we didn't have any problems. Feeling, you know, completing assignments and studying for tests and things. Mm -hmm. it, it was it's a good place. Yes. Yeah. So in terms of extracurricular now, apart from the language club or whatever, if there was one then, mm -hmm. I know in my day they used to have a language table, like the Spanish table where you used to sit and, oh, and have oral okay. Spanish. No, Not if you didn't have that. No, we didn't have that. Uh, we so have the Spanish club and ISCF. Right. And then in six form was part of the sport for speech challenge. Okay. And the, surprisingly enough, I was in the choir. Mm -hmm. Not sure why that was. I did, however, pay for prayers. Mm -hmm. From about third or fourth form, I started paying for prayers. That's good. Yeah. And Hope Davis is one of the persons who motivated me to do that because she used to hear me play in the musical, which is now Isla's Rest. That's she used right. to hear me play in the morning. And the more I said, You ought to pay for prayers. And she drafted me, put me on the roster. Right. And so on. Yes. And it was about that same time that I started playing at my own church when I was in third form. Right. Yeah. I still do to this right. time. Yes. And house, house. Tell us about your house now. Purple Mother. Purple Mother. Right. Got you right. Yes. yes. Purple Mother. And you got involved in house activities? In the, in the um, music competitions, obviously. And the craft. I used to crochet at that time. Mm -hmm. Can't do it anymore. But I used to enter my crochet pieces in the craft competition. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. So let's move on to the next segment. Okay.